Yo, what's up, guys? Gonna be playing some 3-2-3 with Justin and Yeg. Gonna be playing casual, just chilling for today. We don't play ranked with Yegs usually, just a friend of ours. Uh, so it should be fun, just chilling, having a good time. And uh, yeah, we'll still try to get some dubs, get some good goals. We'll see how it goes. Should be some good times, though. All right, for the first game, we got ourselves uh, Skier, EXE, Hinko, and Albert. Very interesting names. Just starting off with a double tap, maybe. Yeggs is uh, not SSL, by the way. He's not actually a pro player or anything. He's just a friend of ours. Been a friend of ours for a while. That was a good shot. That started off. Good placement. Take their corner, maybe just some double. Close. They actually beat them all to this, it's fine. I think like, a good thing about uh, playing casual is you really get to practice, like, you can focus on your rotations really hard. Cause you know how people are like, Obviously, as insane. If you're a pro, I think this is why there's actually kind of a valuable thing. Justin actually plays a lot more casual than most people that are pro players. He actually likes to play casual over rank most of the time. I think it teaches you some really good things, though. Like it, it teaches you how to like play deeper back. Like you don't have people so far like up pressuring you all the time like you do in like super high SSL games. But I think it teaches you stuff that you can't actually get out of rank, to my opinion. It's actually like. Might be like controversial to say that, but I think it actually does teach you some some good stuff as a pro player. It's like another form of free play, if that makes sense. Players are still decent; like, these are still like SSL level players. They're definitely not like high, super high SSL like we normally do play. And this guy is a Super Saiyan Legend title. But he's been SSL before. Good touch from Justin. It's fine. Yeah, he's just. Coming in hot. I'll be far left here if he wants to use me. Maybe a double? I'll just wait for it. Would have been crazy. A little ambitious. Good shot there. But yeah, I didn't say you can practice playing super deep. Practice like focusing on rotation more so than trying to read the opponent because most of the time, I mean, obviously, if you get to the point where you're that high level, like if you're a pro player, high level games are very like mistake like. One mistake causes a goal, right? So in this, it's not so so much the case. Like you can definitely make more mistakes in this. So it gives you that freedom to just focus on stuff outside of just reading the opponent perfectly, which is normally what you have to do at the highest level. Like I said, it doesn't apply for everybody because most of you guys watch this video aren't going to be at the highest level. I'd say like obviously 99.9% .9 of you guys aren't, but that's why I personally think there is some value in casual. But you can find value in lower levels as well, I think, in it. It's also nice to just enjoy the game for what it is. A lot less stress involved in playing casual, obviously. But there's definitely like an improvement aspect to it as well. I think can be overlooked in a way. So I just turn and shoot quick. Close. Like focusing on when I'm turning, like right here. I turn back middle to like leave myself as an option, right? Normally, I probably wouldn't do that because it's a little bit riskier, but just an idea that I can like kind of mess with and see what it does, like see the outcome of that. And there's really no risk in it because in ranked, obviously the risk would be losing my points if that's a bad play, but in this, there's no risk. You don't lose anything if you lose or if you get scored on. It doesn't really matter. So I like to look at it. So I like to play with Justin and Yeggs every now and then when they do run casual. I think it's fun little thing to do to get some extra practice in a different way slightly different way can I pass up to Justin? you missed the boost though so he's a little bit later than I thought but almost dunked him still the downside of the no look the no look passes you're not really sure exactly where your teammate is but sometimes it works Nice. 
Oh, we both went. That's my bad. I save. We could follow up as well. Uh, if you didn't bump me, I was passing to Justin. It's probably gonna be a goal. Shut off that. Try to pass it back to Justin still. He's off the ceiling. Almost worked. Oh my, the ball's just flying. Play to the back wall for him. It's actually like really useful to do that, I think. The underrated thing. Those little back passes. I think back passes in general will like definitely be more part of the meta in a bit. Like people don't use them anywhere near enough. A lot of times there's no option forward. People try to just force an option forward when there really isn't one. I think that's something that people will definitely start doing more back passes. It's just like such a useful thing. You have no way forward a lot of the time and people just try to force, force, force to the corner. Try to go for net, they try to play for a shot. It's not there. Something you can't actually go for. Instead of just like faking a touch forward, play it back. You still have full, full control. You can rotate, get boost. Your team is like a much better position in general on the field if you do that rather than trying to force a play and then having another guy come in and bait himself in on a ball that's not even worth going for. A lot of times the pass back's way better. And you will always have someone behind you if you're rotating properly. So I think that the pass back will definitely become more meta in the future. But as of right now, it's still definitely not used as much as it could be. And uh, I try to look for it as much as I can because I know how useful it can be. But yeah, good first game. Let's get to the next one. It's going to be the same, guys. Because it is casual. Don't have to look up a new lobby, thankfully. Pass to the right. Pass back to me. Close. Might be rough. Save. Try to pass off to the right for Justin. Actually, a good save. Nice little pre flip there. Nice. Very good. Also, I think, like, from like the pro level to like the lower levels. A big thing that people just have a hard time doing is like reading the play. So I think that's a good thing to practice in this too. Just trying to pre-position in the right spot. And again, there's no downside to practicing anything in this. Like you lose, you don't lose anything. A lot of the time people are scared to practice because they're scared of what they'll lose. Like the consequence of losing, right? They're scared to try new things. Because they know that if they lose, you're losing something. You're losing ELO and it's going to be harder to get that rank back and stuff like that. But practice like stuff I, like what I just did right there. Trying to read the play better. Like trying to move into a better position for the ball is going to be. I'll give another example in a second, but... I can just stay here, for example, try to practice like covering back posts, stuff like that. Like little things throughout the game. If the ball's where it's at right now, where is it most likely to go, right? Try to pre-position and just be in a better spot. You're going to be ahead of the game. You're going to seem like a faster player because you're pre-positioning in a good way. That's something that I think like Gimmick, for example, is very, very good at. I've always thought he's exceptional at that. Where he positions and where he you can read the ball going next is crazy. It's almost like he sees the future. But there's definitely little things you can like kind of try to do all the time, like to keep track of little rules you can you can have in your head. If the ball's on the left side. If someone's on the left side of the ball. It's most likely to go to the opposite side, right? Stuff like that. Little things. It's most likely to go left here, obviously. It's little things like that that you can always try to keep in your head to make it easier for you to to read the play and get ahead of the game. I think that's something that definitely like you just learn your on your own with time, but it can definitely be worked on as well. Shot from Justin. I mean, if you guys like like a casual video like this, just having fun, messing around, not taking it too serious. Pass down. Also, it's another example of something you can work on. Boost management. I'm trying to keep 100 boost. Like I gotta sit right there at all times. Reading the play, throwing in fakes. Little things that you can do off the ball that you, you might be a little bit scared to practice in rank. You can definitely practice in casual. And you'll find those things are gonna make you better than the ranked gameplay that you're trying to play the same way all the time because. You know, you're scared to 
to make an adjustment and see how things go. It's a really good example of stuff that can help you, I think. You can't be scared of adjustment and you know what those adjustments might might bring. It might be negative at first, but it might eventually bring you a positive. So I think it's worth trying those things at the very least. It was a very interesting play. <laughs> Works up. Nice from Yeggs. I just need to shoot it. Nicely done. Yeah, a lot of the positioning stuff off the ball, I think it's a lot of like pretty obvious stuff like. You can kind of tell, but when you can read like the intricate situations when like a 50 is coming up or like something like this, for example, kind of know what's best to do with this next ball. That's like a really tough skill to learn, I think. I just wanted to save points. I wanted them too, but I didn't get a save for that somehow. Actually a good shot, I'm not gonna lie. I just controlled this to see if we can make a play. 52 of them. Play back. No one's actually back, so I gotta touch it again. Oh, I thought you excited, but I should've just went right away. All good though. All good. I gotta make that wall dash tutorial, by the way, guys. I haven't done it yet. You gotta do it. And I, I wanna make it good, too. I'm just gonna be... Hard, it's such a hard thing to explain because I want to explain like the little ones and the past ones as well and they're both really really hard to to kind of put into perspective how to do it and do it consistently and it took me a long time to learn like a very long time to learn it properly and I feel like I have it down now but it's still it's just such a difficult thing really good angle I don't know how I scored that I'm not gonna lie Very, very nice. Might be a goal from Pinko. Oh, never mind. I'm gonna wait back all here. Probably don't have a quick shot, so I don't need to panic. Oh, Justin shot. Close. It's a good dunk, at least. But force him to hit it across now. Try to scoop this up. Adjust to take. Double tap, maybe. Close. He's gonna boom this away to me. And that's a really good example of what I was talking about. I was just reading the play like perfectly, pretty much. I'm last time back for a while, but I wait for the touches just right. Force two out of the play, pretty much for nothing, and then make the third guy go as well. That's really good. But yeah, it's actually fun. I actually enjoyed uh, just playing these games, chilling. Had a lot of fun. Underrated. This game, some casual with the boys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have yourself a wonderful day or night, whatever time it is when you're watching this. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. I love y'all. Peace.